So I'm learning a lot about Bucknell history and, and specifically with the football program. Um, you know, you talked about the recruiting process and when you played high school ball, you know, your team wasn't that successful. Obviously you came in and I mean, you put up video game type numbers. It looked like just looking at the stats, um, you know, crushing, crushing the all time rushing record by over 2000 yards, um, you know, fifth graduating with 15 school records. We mentioned earlier the 28, 100 yard plus games. What was your recruiting process like when you were looking at Bucknell? You know, I assume you were getting looked at by a lot of schools um, just kind of walk us through that. That always interests me how, how, you know, folks like you ended up here and had such a tremendous career and we're lucky to have you as an alum. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually one of my favorite stories because, you know, coming out, I, I had, you know, I actually had a 300 yard game in high school. And so, you know, even though I was only, I, I tell everybody I was 5'8", but I think I grew since Bucknell. So I, and I'm still 5'8", so I was even smaller. And so I, I thought I was that dude, you know, in high school. And I thought I was the best running back in the world. I don't care, you know, size don't matter. I thought I was that guy. I got my first letter from Penn State, showed up at Penn State with probably 30, 40 other top recruits. Mm -hmm. And I started looking around the room and I'm like, holy cow, they, <laughs> like size actually does matter. I was a part of the, the blue and white game for spring ball for a part of that experience. That was when OJ McDuffie and those guys were playing. So to be on the, on the field as a recruit and I'm standing next to my older brother and he looks at me and says, you can't go here. And I was like, what do you mean? I can't go here. He's like, these boys are too big. You need to, you need to go somewhere else. Then Now Forever Ray explores a wide array of topics surrounding Bucknell athletics and the lives of Bucknellians near and far, with live interviews hosted by Senior Associate Athletic Director Joel Morse. Then Now Forever Ray highlights the university's proud tradition of excellence in the classroom, in the competitive arena, and in life after graduation. Hey, Rich, what's going on? What's up? What's up, man? What's going hey, on? Good to see you. <laughs> you as well. I almost wore that hoodie. We were almost hey, twins. You should have. You should have. But you look. You look sharp. <laughs> You're rocking some Bucknell gear. I love it. Always representing, brother. Always. I love it. We got a. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. It's over my shoulder here, but we're rocking the number twenty-eight jersey behind me today. I see that. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I didn't even know. I, I I'm gonna have I, to come to school and get one. That's else. right. That's right. It's got your name all over it, literally. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it, but I was checking out some of your stats, and that's so ironic. You had you had twenty-eight one hundred yard plus rushing games. That's impressive. That was purposeful. That's impressive. That was purposeful. Yeah. I wanted to stop at 20. I'm, I'm kidding. You stopped at 28. I'm, I'm kidding. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was a good time, you know, um, just, you know, the whole four years, the last year I was a little bit injured, but watching the development of some of the younger guys, of course, they went 10 and one after I graduated. Um, so to, to, to show and display the leadership that we had as a group of seniors that I don't recall the number, but we were we were pretty deep. And then by the time we graduated, I think we had less than like 14, 15 seniors. Okay. And so for our leadership to improve to impact some of the younger teammates um, for them to go 10 and one was pretty special to watch, even though I didn't get to, you know, participate. Yeah. You guys got the ring though, right? Cause you, you have the Patriot league championship ring. Darn Skippy. <laughs> Am I allowed to curse? <laughs> we can, Darn we can bleep out anything you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a kid's show. Okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah. The ring was, uh, that was, my most important accomplishment in my four years, um, it was the, the number one goal when I walked in. You know, I, I had won in Little League. You know, we won the Super Bowl in the Pee Wees at like 10 years old. We were undefeated in junior high school, but now they call it middle school. And once I got to high school, we were bad. Like, you know, my, my sophomore year, I think we went two and eight. And then, you know, I just was always on in a part of losing programs. And so when I joined the university and, and was a part of the Bucknell football family, you know, we, we had to make that transition. And we had a lot of talent. 
like the talent that I played with was it, it was impactful. And so to try to bring a winning attitude to the to the university and to the program was special to be a part of and to close out my four years with the ring was even more special i wish we could have continued it but i believe you know uh with the passing of my former coach tom gad um, i think that kind of set things back a little bit because he had brought in a um a philosophy that changed the entire mindset of not only the players, but everybody that was involved and it extended beyond the campus and it was special to watch. And I will always refer to him as Joe Pa of Bucknell. Um, and I think that if we didn't go through the untimely and, and unfortunate passing of Tom Gad, that the university would have stayed on track. Um, we just couldn't keep his, uh, all of his teachings, they didn't remain um, in his passing. And so we've got to start from scratch. I believe in, I played against coach, uh, coach Cicchini. And so I, I think that, uh, he's a, he's a good choice for us. He's familiar with the university. He's familiar with the Patriot League. He's familiar with how we go about trying to build a winning program. He was a part of the winning programs, uh, where he's come from. And so I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, now that, not necessarily COVID is in the past, but COVID impacted some of the growth and development of the young guys. But uh, that spring ball where they p competed for the championship for the first time, and uh, I guess it was in since 96, you know, it, it let us know that we were on the right track. So uh, looking forward to getting back on campus. Well, I appreciate hearing all that. I actually have a number of follow-up questions on that. But you know, first, and I know this is a really tough um, subject with the Gad family, and I know they've gone through an extremely difficult difficult time lately. Um, you know, wh what does the Gad family mean to you? You mentioned Coach and your relationship with him. Have you kept in touch with the family over the years? I'm more in touch with uh, his uh, widow, Carol Gad, uh, not as frequently as I'd like, but of course we've uh, found ourselves on campus at the same time over the past uh, 15, 20 years and always fun to reconnect. I reconnected with her um, after Coach passed a couple years later. As a matter of fact, it was when Bucknell beat Kansas in the basketball. Yeah. I happened to be in Dallas when they played uh, Arkansas the second round, and I went to dinner with her. And we, you know, we just reminisced, caught up, and we've been in touch ever since. Um, they, they mean a lot. I mean, you know, coach and I didn't always see eye to eye as, as player and coach, but I knew what he was trying to build in regard to developing me, developing me, not only as a student athlete, but as a man, uh, not just for the four years or the two years I was with him in Lewisburg, but fast forward to where I am now in my career. And so I, I didn't understand that as an immature 20 year old, uh, but I get it now and I'm super appreciative. Um, I wish he were around so I can hug him, shake his hand and thank him. Uh, and, and fortunately I have a relationship with his wife or widow and, uh, you know, I thank her and we, we talk and we laugh now because coach was hard on me, even as, you know, the quote unquote, the guy on the team, he, he didn't hold no punches. You know, he benched me when I didn't show up for class. He made me sit in the front. You know, if I was late for meetings, I got punished. I was just one of the teammates. And I can appreciate that now because now that I have, I don't coach as much and now as I used to, but coaching you got to treat everybody the same. You got to be, you know, I don't care how good you are, how bad you are. Every person plays a role. And, and in order to win that championship, you have to master your your part in that puzzle. So I'm learning a lot about Bucknell history and, and specifically with the football program. Um, you know, you talked about the recruiting process. And when you played high school ball, you know, your team wasn't that successful. Obviously, you came in and, I mean, you put up video game type numbers, it looked like, just looking at the stats, um, you know, crushing crushing the all-time rushing record by over 2,000 yards, um, you know, fifth, graduating with 15 school records. We mentioned earlier the 28 100-yard-plus games. What was your recruiting process like when you were looking at Bucknell? You know, I assume you were getting looked at by a lot of schools, um, just kind of walk us through that. That always interests me how, how, you know, folks like you ended up here and had such a tremendous career and we're lucky to have you as an alum. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually one of my favorite stories because, 
you know, coming out, I, I had, you know, I actually had a 300 yard game in high school. And so, you know, even though I was only, I, I tell everybody I was 5'8", but I think I grew since Bucknell. So I, and I'm still 5'8", so I was <laughs> even smaller. And so I, I thought I was that dude, you know, in high school. And I thought I was the best running back in the world. I don't care, you know, size don't matter. I thought I was that guy. I got my first letter from Penn State, showed up at Penn State with probably 30, 40 other top recruits. Mm-hmm. And I started looking around the room and I'm like, holy cow, (laughs) like size actually does matter. I was a part of the the blue and white game for spring ball for a part of that experience. That was when OJ McDuffie and those guys were playing. So to be on the on the field as a recruit and I'm standing next to my older brother and he looks at me and says, you can't go here. And I was like, what do you mean? I can't go here. He's like, these boys are too big. You need to you need to go somewhere else. And so it, it, it kind of level set me and let me understand that, you know, okay, let's just say I was five, seven hundred and fifty pounds. Do you want a guy that's five, seven, one fifty? Or do you want Mike Archie was actually um, I want to say he was a senior when I was or a freshman when I was being rec- recruited. Mike played for Penn State, went on to the NFL. But Mike Archie was from Pennsylvania. Uh, which was like 30 minutes away from where I went to high school in Sharon, PA, I think. Uh, And one of the teachers in my high school told me about Mike Archie. And when I looked up Mike Archie and the guy was probably 5'10", 210 pounds, had the same speed as me, way stronger than me. You know, so when you look at bigger, faster, stronger, check, 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 Rich Lemon loses. So now we got to start looking at small schools. And unfortunately, it went from 1A some of the Mac schools liked me, like the Toledo's, the Kent States, but they all wanted me to walk on. And then it, it skipped all the way down to Division Three. And I took some visits to Oberlin University, Denison University over in that Midwest area in Ohio. And I, I just didn't think, I thought I had more talent. I thought I had more skills and maybe it was naive of me to think that I was better than I actually was. But I, I did not want to go to a Division Three school. I thought it would, to me, it looked like high school. And no disrespect to any college athlete at that level, playing college football is special no matter what level you are. I just thought I had a level of talent and I had goals to be a professional football player and I didn't think D3 would get me there. And so I I ended up essentially saying, I'm not going to play football anymore. I'm just going to go. I'm a smart kid. I'm just going to go to John Hopkins. And I told my uh, guidance counselor who She's still alive. I visit her every year when I go back home to Ohio. Uh, She is the hallmark of why I know Bucknell. Because when I told her I don't want to go play football anymore, I said, I want to go to John Hopkins. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. We'll do something special through the career path. And she said, well, Rich, they don't have a football team. I said, yeah, I'm aware. I guess I got to let that dream go. And she said, wait one minute. There's a guy named Lenny Redmond that's friends with my daughter. I went to now McKinley High School and he went to Warren G. Harding, which is where Warren Western Reserve actually was uh, Warren G. Harding because they had combined. Okay. And so he came to my basketball game in, in January and, you know, just to meet me and he saw me play basketball and he said, man, if you're better at football than you are basketball, you could help us at Bucknell. And Coach Dick Riley, who was my recruiting coach, who has uh, since passed, and Coach Riley came like a week later and I visited Bucknell and the rest is history. Uh, but it's all because of my guidance counselor, you know, not wanting me to give up on my football dream, but still wanting me to focus on that academic part. Because I was like, well, mom wants me to get a degree, so I'm just going to go ahead and get a freaking degree. I'd rather play football, but, you know, it is what it is. And she said, Richie, you can still do both. And fortunately, I listened to her and Coach Riley showed up and I got to campus. I was sixth on the depth chart. They didn't, you know, I was the smallest guy. So I was six out of six running backs. And, you know, fortunately, but unfortunately, fortunately for me, everybody got dinged, you know, hip pointer here, ankle sprain here, pulled hamstring here. And so, you know, if you don't practice, you fall in a depth chart. And I didn't care how bumped up I was going to be because I was so low on the totem pole and the new kid on the block. I said, I, I don't care how hurt I am take me up like a mummy I'm going in and I finally made myself into that first team huddle and uh, we opened up against the division two school and they said well we'll keep the upperclassmen uh, Craig Svensson was his name he was the incumbent starter and they said we'll keep him to, to allow him to recover from his injury because the second week we played Lafayette league game we're trying to win a championship so let the rookie go against Bloomsburg, a Division II school. Our defense is strong. He can do enough. We'll protect it, you know, and 
I ran for 200 yards. Nobody knew. I didn't even know. <laughs> it was it was actually 210. <laughs> yeah, 210. <That's> <laughs> well, no, I I love hearing that. Thanks thanks for telling that story. We certainly have your guidance counselor to thank um, because it's pretty incredible what you accomplished and what you continue to do to help Bucknell. Um, now you talked about the big boys when you were at Penn State and you saw the big guys around. I want to talk about the guys in the trenches really quick. You know, one of the yeah. things that fascinates me you know, having never stepped foot on a division one playing field is actually hearing about stars. And even at the next level in the NFL, um, talking about the O-line and, and thanking them and crediting them for the success that they have. Um, you know, later today, this isn't public yet, but Marius Miziak's going to join you in the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame. Um, so I, yeah, yeah. So, so talk a little bit about, you know, about Marius and the whole O-line and what they mean to you. Yeah, the, the entire O-line, uh, there's a ton of stories because, of course, I, I started first game as a freshman and continued that track. Um, just right from the jump, the seniors that were in that line as a freshman that supported me. Um, and I would extend that to my fullback. Uh, my fullback at the time, uh, he, he looked like Jerome Bettis. <laughs> like, he, he, was, he was a big guy. Uh, we called him McHuge. His name, his name was Steve McHugh, nice. but we called him McHuge. And I, you know, and so he was a part of that. You know, my first two carries against Bloomsburg, I want to say, were negative yards, or you know, I got stymied at the line of scrimmage. And uh, the center, Gary Petros, uh, who also has passed away, Gary Petros pulled me to the side and said, "Hey, you scared, Rook?" Of course, he's cursing. And I was like, nah. And he said, "You're running scared. Stop running like a, a B I T C H." And I was like, okay. And Steve McHugh, my fullback, came over and said, don't worry, big dog, I got you. He was like, don't worry about it, just follow me, and then took off. And so, you know, that that group, Vince Mays, um, Ed Fratterelli, Don Watson, like that whole team, Scott Thistleweight, you know, and then you go fast forward to – my uh, my junior year when Mesius, uh, Marius Mesiak, we call him Moose because he was so big. I saw him during his recruitment trip and I was like, please tell me you play offense. And he said, yes. And I was like, my guy, like you're going to be my dude. Um, so super appreciative of, of every offensive lineman from front to back, uh, freshman year to senior year. Uh, senior year was a little rough. I battled some injuries, had a lot of young guys up front, but they ended up being ballers. Uh, my backup at the time, who was my partner in crime, Chris Peer, he ran for a thousand yards with the same line that I ran for like 700 yards with. And so it just shows that, you know, we had the right talent, just had to get them some growth, some confidence, build up some strength, get some conditioning and understand, you know, the difference between the transition from high school to college, because offensive line calls at the college level is different than at the high school level. Um, so a lot of love and appreciation and respect. You know, everybody, and I, I said this, I may have said this in my Hall of Fame speech, you know, everybody knows me, but that record is nothing without, I, I never did the math, but it had to be, you know, 20, 25 guys that were, um, that were blocking for me. And then, of course, I extend that to the equipment managers, my trainers. Like, I thanked every single person mm -hmm. because it, it's not me without, you know, people taking care of me. I was a little dude. My training staff had to put together the right regimen to make sure that I was healed, you know, week after week, because on Sundays, you know, we're going and we're doing strength and conditioning and then we're watching film after the Saturday game. I could barely walk. Yeah. And and so for them to get me back in shape so I can participate in practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, get the walkthroughs done on Friday and then show back up Friday, like you said, 28 straight 100 yard games, that's a testament to the equipment manager providing the right equipment, you know, sizing me and, and still allowing me to keep my my uh, my speed and, and but also allowing me to stay remain protected and then the equipment um, the the training staff to put to put together a program that you know I'm icing you know two times a day you know 20 minutes on 20 minutes off when I'm battling from an injury or something like that and you know so it's top to bottom you know coaches you know, uh, teachers challenging me in the classroom, making sure that they're holding me accountable so I can remain eligible, you know, coach holding me accountable for a film study, strength and conditioning. Uh, I, I mentioned the training staff, the equipment manager, and then my O-line, that's just on Saturdays, you know, so, you know, they, we do the work 
throughout the week, you know, all day, every day. But on Saturdays, all I'm doing is executing the play that coach is calling and they're doing all the work. All I'm, I see the hole, I hit it. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> Cer- certainly impressive the the numbers you put up and the success that the team had. Now, the first time that I had the opportunity to meet you, our AD Jermaine Truex and I hopped on a Zoom call with you and John yep. Henry. Um, you know, and I walked away from that call just thinking about the brotherhood that you were talking about and the tight knit bond with your teammates. Is that in your mind what's what's most special about Bucknell and Bucknell football? It really is. Um and I, I, I just had a conversation with another friend, a uh, guy I work with. He was a baseball player. And, and the relationships that we have, you know, in that locker room are different than with the regular classmates. Because when I give up my summer to, you know, and everybody knows I love my mom, uh, who has also passed. You know, I, I give up my summer of, of hanging out with friends and family to spend at Bucknell. And you do the same. And we're bleeding. We're sweating. We're crying. We're vomiting. Like, guys are passing out because it's hot. You know, it, 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 you can look at each other at, at a different way. And so here we are 20, 30 years later, and it's like, wow, you're still my guy. And, and I still have friends from high school. But the levels are different, you know, because what we go through in college and, and you know, the, the uh, thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, you know, you share you share that. Like you, you have essentially grown men, 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 300 pounds, and they're crying because we want to win so bad. And we don't just want to win. We want to win for each other. We want to win for the program. And, and to experience that with one another, our, our bond is forever entrenched. It's never going to be broken. Well, I, I can't wait to see you back on campus this fall. Um, I know we have the golf tournament coming up on July yeah, 30th, yeah. where a lot of guys are going to come back for that. Are you, are you going to be back for the tournament again this year? I, I need to. I'm trying to work up, you know, I, I've got a, I always go with my brothers. And so we've got a lot going on. I don't know if we'll be able to make it. And so I'm doing a last ditch effort to see if we can pull it together. Uh, certainly September, probably in the fall. I'm certain I'm going to start returning back because I'm getting older. My siblings are getting older. And so I got to have an opportunity for us to continue to build memories and share uh, the Bucknell memories because my family always came to see me play. Um, so I want to get back to campus at least twice a year. Um, so if not the golf tournament, certainly during the season. I love going to the games. I love seeing the product that's being put on the field. And so uh, I'm working with my brother right now. If we don't do the golf tournament, we'll be there in September uh, for one of the games. Awesome, awesome. Well, the last question that I have for you, you know, has to do with giving back. And um, you've been a generous supporter. We can't thank you enough for what you're doing to help the you know, help the football program move forward so others can have similar experiences that you had. You know, one of the one of the fascinating things about working in higher education and and advancement in general is just seeing when it clicks for alumni. You know, and it's yeah. it's always at different times when alums figure out that I had this experience. This is what it really meant to me, even outside of the records and, and the personal accolades. Um, When, when did it click for you? You know, when, when did you um, start to think more about paying it forward and and giving back to the future generations of bison that are coming through here? The day I walked off campus, uh, I want to say May 24th, 1997. Uh, It was something that, you know, I grew up in a low income household, single parent with five kids, four boys and a girl. And so ends weren't always there. You know, I was the baby, so I, I was kind of rotten and spoiled. But I watched, you know, my brother share clothes when I was younger. My mom bought my clothes from the garage sales. And so I was wearing my neighbor's clothes. That was my best friend on the baseball team, football team, whatever. And so I always knew that, you know, because somebody paid it forward for me, I would do the same once I had that, that financial means. And uh, another piece, you know, another tribute to Tom Gadd. It was something that he instilled in us uh, when he was building our program back. And so he had pulled all of the seniors and starters, the returning starters together our junior year when he took the job. And we called every living alum, not for a handout. We just said, thank you. And we let them know that, you know, we were building something special and we invited the, invited them to come see us play. And that was it. And, and the reaction that we got from all those alums 
Um, you know, some of them had, been, had graduated in the 60s and they were like, we will come see you play. I've been a financial supporter, but I'm, I'm thankful that you're calling just to say thank you and come see us play. And so I get frustrated with some of my my generation of teammates, especially those that were impacted by Tom Gadd, because that's what he taught us. That's what he instilled in us. Like, I would not have what I have if it wasn't for the privilege of attending Bucknell University and the privilege of some of those alums back when I was in providing their financial or their time, any whatever level of support it was that they provided for us, they provided support. And so I, you know, I work with Todd Newcomb and others, and we're trying to bring that back to the program um, because somewhere along the way, we got lost. That's not on a university. We, we can still, as individuals, pressure the university to hear our voices, and we all need to come together because the, the one thing Tom Gadd used to tell us was the, the strength of the program is in its alum. And so we're crappy alums because we're not supporting the program heavy enough. We have individuals, but it needs to be a collective effort. Did you learn anything from that experience when you were making those phone calls? Any, you know, any good stories or did you keep in touch with any of the alumni that you actually spoke to on the phone? Well, it was different for me because, you know, when, when they hear Rich Lemon, they're like, yo, I come to see you play great game. And then it gets sidetracked. And I'm like, man, this ain't about me. It's about the program. Uh, but, yeah. but yeah, all, I'm, I'm thankful for all of the alums. Uh, spent a lot of time after games shaking their hands. And when I return to campus, um, I usually do the receptions, whether it's the coach's reception or, you know, the golf outing reception. And, of course, reconnecting with them, uh, reminding them who I am because they think I'm one of the younger guys sometimes. They're like, you know, I guess they expected me to get fat or something. <laughs> but reminding them, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to get back on campus, meet and greet with some of the other alums, uh, let them know where I am am now at this stage of my life um, and to thank them for helping me get here. Well, Rich, um, I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited to meet you in person this fall. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do for the program and uh, go Bison. Go Bison. Thank you. Really appreciate you. And shout out to Dorothy Fogel. That's my guidance counselor. I got to call her. All right. Yeah. She's thank you. Reason. Thank you. Dorothy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> appreciate you, Rich. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you.